everybody? Welcome back to SGU Uncut. My name is Emily. I'll be your host for this series, joined today by Walter. Oh, thanks for having me. It's great to be back here again. Now, last time you were here, you had like your Christmas vest on. Yeah, eight degree weather isn't exactly good for it, but uh, <laughs> you know. You can get a Hawaiian shirt going for next time. Yeah, we got the hair going for it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are in week two of our series, Victory, and this whole series is all about learning how we're redeemed, that through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are redeemed and saved. And today, we're talking about doubts. And we all have doubts in our lives. Like, me, maybe you doubt that you're going to pass your classes this semester. <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> Walter, what's a doubt that you've, had to, that you've had about your life? I think probably recently, this is, this is very applicable to my life, actually. Um, you know, about like eight months ago, um, uh, I went to a school that was very commuter-based, mm -hmm. and it... I wasn't happy there. You know, the academics mm -hmm. were great, but it just, I wasn't happy. And so, you know, I began to doubt, like, well, is this what I want to do? And is this, mm -hmm. you know, like, just pretty much every aspect of my life. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't until, like, a lot of a lot of events transpired recently that I I knew what I wanted, you know, like, and, and that was, you know, I still enjoyed computer science, which was my mm -hmm. major, but I wanted something smaller. I wanted a community that I could get behind, people mm -hmm. that I could befriend, professors I could talk to. And so... That was that was you know what I was looking for, mm -hmm. and so you know I'm happy I, I have found that one. Yeah, that's awesome. I think we all have doubts like that in our lives. That's a pretty hard one to go through, especially at, like this time. But um, we have doubts over everything. But there's also ones that aren't so surface level, like doubts about God. I mean, we look at life and we see all this hurt everywhere. I mean, we go down to Baltimore City, even you see homelessness and riots and even in our personal lives, going through the loss of a loved one, struggling with sickness or mental health. I don't know. Has there been anything that has made you doubt God? Yeah. So my junior year in high school, um, it was spring break, and my dad and I went out west to go skiing. Uh, it was the first run of the day. It was actually mm -hmm. our first day there. I just turned my GoPro on, um, you know, setting up to start the run, and um, just this little girl blows past me, and I had to, like, almost, like, drop down so she wouldn't hit me. Um, and I was on a double black diamond, and I see her just go off to the side and run right into a tree. Um. You know, I go over, I try to help, I, I get the ski patrol, but I come back, and uh, unfortunately, she didn't make it. Um, and so that was very hard for me, to, mm -hmm. to, to watch a little girl die right in front of me, and then to, to like, go in, like, hey, like, you know, like, I can remember it very clearly. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that, that took a lot. And so I, not only did I doubt God, I, like, genuinely hated him, because mm -hmm. I was like, here is an innocent little girl who was on a vacation with her family and was just lost, and now she's dead, in, like, a brutal death. Mm -hmm. And for the longest time, I just despised God. I hated him. I, I, I doubted it. And, um, yeah, it wasn't until very recently that I uh, pretty much renewed my relationship with him. Mm -hmm. How were you able to overcome that doubt and find so, God again? So probably like eight months ago, part of, part of my, uh, I guess this is the certain events that transpired, um, I was very, I, I, I was dealing with my own mental health issues, um, I was just depressed, mm -hmm. and on top of that, just not being happy where I was, and just pretty a lot of things in my life. Um, and you get to a point where you don't see a way out, and you get to a point where you know you kind of have two options, and one is God, and the other one isn't a very good option. Mm -hmm. And so I turned to God, and and I realized, you know, I I can do this. Everything I have is like I can I can fix this. This is mm -hmm. doable, and so you know, thankfully, you know, I'm here. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it took a lot, believe me, to, to renew that. But once mm -hmm. I did, once I was willing to be willing and accept him, mm -hmm. I mean, it was it was it, it was amazing. It's like this, just like love washes over you. The weight of the world is lifted, mm -hmm. and it's like you're able to delegate like your your problems and and you know like i mean for me a lot of my main problem was depression mm -hmm. and a lot of that is when it's like when you know it's like this is going to be okay and you can have that higher power it mm -hmm. i mean it i i know i know for a fact i would not be here if i didn't turn to god yeah i understand that i relate to you with the depression piece i mean i struggle with it too it's hard and in the moments where i am starting to doubt god like why aren't you pulling me out of this why aren't you healing me it scares me. Like I, it's just fear based. So like that's what happens to me when I start doubting God. What does it feel like for you when you doubt God? What do you experience? So when I was doubting God, it was a lot of hate. It was a lot of like, um, 
That's interesting you say fear based. I, I don't know. I always mm-hmm. I always found it as like I would just I would just hate him because I'm like, why are you doing this? Why would you kill a little girl? Like what mm-hmm. like what is the benefit here? Who wins? Mm-hmm. Like there's no purpose to this. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of it was genuine like hate was was how I felt it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But um and and it's funny because I spent so long just with this like just I just hating him and and having the, like such a passion for that hatred. I. I was just, I was making myself so much more miserable because mm-hmm. of that. And then, you know, you go, why is this all happening to me? And, but you got to stop asking, why is this happening to me? And you got to ask, why is this happening for me? Yeah, that's a great way to look at it. Yeah. And that goes along with a lot of people, at least in my life, that don't believe in God or have strong doubts about God. They say, if God was real, he wouldn't let all these bad things happen. But God never promised that bad things wouldn't happen to us. He just promised that he'd be there to be by our side through all of it, through all of our suffering, all of our pain, anything we experience. What does that mean to you, to know that God is by your side through all of that? Because that's, that's heavy stuff. It's not easy. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's, it's funny. I, in the time, I, I would have I probably, I, I don't know, I would have been very upset if somebody had told me that back in the, um, you know, back when I, when I hated him. But mm-hmm. um, now it's funny. I, I can look back and I can see. I can see every little detail of my life and how it all mm-hmm. came to fruition and amounted to where I am now. Mm-hmm. And I would, not be, I would not be here today. I would not be the person I am and as happy as I am mm-hmm. um, if he was not with me that entire way. I hope and pray everyone can feel that way at some yeah. point in their lives. You know, the other day I was talking to someone and he asked me, what does it, like for you, what does it mean when people don't believe in God until the end of their lives? Like, what, is, what does that look like to you? Or until even after they die, like, what do you think happens to them? And I started talking about the story of Doubting Thomas, about how he did not believe until he saw Jesus's hands and sides of the wounds from the cross. And it's okay if you don't believe right now because you'll get to see him face to face. You'll believe at that one point. And I feel so blessed to believe it now to have him through all of these things. But so the story of Thomas, he was an apostle of Jesus. He sat at the table with him. He saw all the good Jesus did. He saw the miracles happen, but he didn't believe in the resurrection. And we see it in the Bible. After the fact, two apostles go to Peter to Thomas and tell them what happened like oh my gosh Jesus just rose from the dead God's back God's good and he says unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the where the nails were and put my hand into his side I will not believe he would not believe until he saw the wounds do you ever feel that way with God like when you can't feel his presence anymore you just you need to see something to believe In the past, I, I definitely would have. Um, I struggle a lot less with that now because I, I have a lot. I have um, you would like this perspective. I have a much different <laughs> perspective um, of uh, of everything. Um, but there are times still. It's like you know, like um, if you any, anybody who has depression knows the fact that it doesn't go away. Mm-hmm. It's something you deal with forever. You know, there are yeah. days you don't like want to get out of bed. There's days you're just you know like upset you're awake. But you know, it's managing it. It's not you don't cure it. You manage it. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that is. Um, you know, it's 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 hard to feel the presence, especially when you're low, especially mm-hmm. when you don't want to get out of that bed. Um, and so one thing I like to do is pray because I always find it's like when you reach out to him, he'll reach back. Mm-hmm. And so I find it's like if I don't feel like he's there, sometimes you got to take the initiative. Yeah. It's like the um, painting, Michelangelo's painting, Creation of Adam, where mm-hmm. God's reaching his hand out. And Adam just has to reach out a little more in order to feel God's presence. That's the same. I love that image. Like that's exactly what you're just talking about. And I think that when we have these doubts, we do that prayer. We will see Jesus reaching back out to us. I mean, he actually went to Peter when he found out that Peter was not believing. He went to him and said to Thomas, I keep calling him Peter. Why am I doing that? His name's Thomas. We're talking about doubting Thomas right now. (laughs) He said, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Thomas says to him right now, this is the moment he believes. He addresses Jesus as my Lord and my God. And that's like he saw and believed. And maybe that's you today. Maybe you're waiting to see God. You're waiting to feel his presence. And I promise you, it is worth the wait. Is it worth the wait? 
Yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> it's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> so in the midst of all the chaos of the suffering of the doubt, whatever you're struggling with in your faith or in your life, God is always by your side and he always will be, whether you believe it or not, you'll believe it one day, hopefully. Um, yeah, that's the story of Thomas. That's about doubts. That's well, we're here today. Thank you for joining us today, oh, Walter. Well, thanks for having me. This was fun. Yeah, Great awesome. conversation. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us. We hope that our conversation here feels your conversation in small group, and we'll see you next week.